All right, 8.1, exploring the logarithmic function. The inverse of the exponential function y equals a to the x is the function with the exponential equation x equals a to the y. So basically, we're looking at this function and we're taking the inverse. To take the inverse, you swap the x and the y, and this is what you get here. Now, the thing is, is that when you want an inverse equation, we need to isolate for y. So basically, this is y inverse that we're looking at. So we write y as a function of x by using the logarithmic form of this equation. So it's y equals log a of x. So basically, we're looking at here as being this is the inverse equation of y equals a to the x. So this is actually y inverse. And this is where a is greater than 0 and a does not equal 1. This is called the logarithmic function. So the inverse of an exponential is the logarithmic equation. And note the inverse here. So this is, if this is y, this is y inverse of the same function. Now, example of a logarithmic and it's a logarithm and its meaning. So let's look at this for a second, and we're just going to go back a sec. So when you see a log base 2 of 8 equals some number, this means that 2 to the power of this, the answer, is equal to the argument 8. So this is what it this means. This logarithmic statement means this in exponential form. So 2 to the power of what gives you 8? Well, hopefully you know that the answer is 3. So log base a of x is equal to y means a to the power of y is equal to x. And remember, we just looked at that in, term, in the last page in terms of the inverse function and the original function. The general shape of the graph of a logarithmic function depends on the value of its base. So we have the domain, the range, the asymptote, whether it's increase or decrease, and find the end behavior. So we have an exponential and a logarithmic equation. The domain of an exponential is x belongs to real. The range of an exponential is y belongs to real such that y is greater than 0. There's an asymptote at y equals 0. And this function, if the base is greater than 1, means that as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0 from the positive side. And as x approaches negative, sorry, positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. So if we're looking at the graphs, this is what we're talking about here. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches the 0 from the positive side, and as x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches positive infinity. Now, when it's a is between 0 and 1, so the base is between 0 and 1, we're looking at the equation looking like this. So the function looks like this. Oh, note here. The green graph is forever increasing, so it increases from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, looking at the blue graph, we write the end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches neg positive infinity, y approaches 0 from the positive side. This blue graph is cons consistently decreasing on the entire interval from negative infinity to infinity. Logarithmic. Let's look at the logarithmic equation. Well, if you remember... An exponential is this, a logarithm of the same function would ha is the inverse of an exponential. So what was originally the domain will now become the range. And what is originally the range will now become the domain. And that's exactly what we have going on here. Looking at the graph, the asymptote turns out to be on the y-axis, and your green graph will look like this. So there's your domain and range altered. Your asymptote is at x equals 0. And as x approaches 0 from the positive side, so we're looking here, as x approaches 0 from the positive side, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches positive infinity. 
So y approaches negative infinity down here. There is nothing on the other side. Now, this function is also increasing from 0 to infinity, not including the 0, don't forget. If it, the base is between 0 and 1, we're looking at the following, looking at the blue graph, this is the following n behaviors, and this is the, it is a decreasing function on that interval. All right, so this is the explanation of the domain and range asymptote increasing, decreasing, and n behaviors of the general logarithmic function and the exponential function. So here's an example of a graph. Okay, both graphs are here. The first graph is y equals 2 to the x. The second graph is y, y inverse of log base 2 to the x. This particular dotted line that you see here is the line in which the function has a mirror image. So an inverse is always a reflection on this y equals x line. So this is an example of where the base is greater than 1. So we chose 2 to the x to be an example to show you what the corresponding graphs look like using graphing technology. Next example is one where the base is between 0 and 1. So this is an example. Again, you have your reflective line. You have that the, every point on the blue line reflects on this particular red line. So for example, this point right here we'll find over here. So each point reflects back and forth. And this point over here is point of inflection, meaning that that point doesn't change whether it's red or blue. All right, and this is again the base where a is between 0 and 1, and these are your two functions, the graphs using graphing technology. So let's look at example number 1. Example number 1 says evaluate the following without using a calculator. Now, you'll be allowed a calculator for the test. The difference here, though, is the fact that even if you have a calculator, it doesn't necessarily give you the right answer. So you have to know how to use your calculator. But not only that, I'll be looking for something that indicates that you could do this without using a calculator. So, looking at question part A, log base 5 of root 5. So, if we set it equal to x, what we're saying is 5 to the power of x is equal to root 5. What is root 5 as an exponent? Well, you will remember that root 5 as an exponent is actually 5 to the power of a half. So that means if 5 to the x is equal to 5 to the half, and I know these powers are equal, their bases are equal, that means their exponents are equal. So x is equal to a half. Let's look at the next one. Log base 4 of 128 so is equal to x. So 4 to the power of x is equal to 128. What do we do here when we know that 128 does not have the same base as 4? Well, I can make both of these have the same base of 2. So 4 to the x can become 2 squared to the x. So 2 squared is 4, so 2 to the power of 2, x. 128, we need to break that up. So how would you break that up if you didn't have a calculator? Well, it takes 128, and you know it's 64 times 2. 64 can be broken up into 8 times 8. So when we look at this question, let's look at that again. 64 times 2, we have 8, 8, and 2. Three twos go into eight, three twos go into eight, three more go into this eight, and one more goes here. All together, we have two to the power of seven. So we have two to the two x is equal to two to the seven. That means the powers are equal. Two x is equal to seven. That means x is equal to 3.5. So this is the result for this particular question. So although it looked like we couldn't get it, well, if you change it to the same base, you will get an answer that is logical. Now, you could have 3.5 or 7.2, folks. Either answer is acceptable. All right, we're going to look at another example, part C, D, and E. 
In the first question, we have log base 8 is equal to 1. That means 8 to the power of x is equal to 1. What possible value is that? Well, x equals 0. This should be self-explanatory. Something to give you 1 is 8 to the power, any base to the power of 0 with the exception of 0. Let's look at the next one. Log base 3 of 1 third. 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 third. What's 1 third with the base of 3? Well, that's 3 to the negative 1. 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the negative 1. That means x is equal to negative 1. Let's look at the last one. Log base 2 of negative 4. What it's asking is 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 4. Is that a possibility? Well, try as you might, guys. You won't be able to get a negative value because the base is positive. If the base is positive, you're only going to have positive arguments that you're allowed to use. So this number can only be positive. It could never be negative. Because of that, this is impossible. It's not possible to have a value here that will exist. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to stop the video here, and we're going to go on to the next video. Take care. See you in the next video.